tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So then we're going to move over to Matthew 5 and 21. It says, when this is when Jesus was talking or teaching about anger. He said, you have heard that our ancestors were told you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. He said, but I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fire of hell. Now, you say, wow, those are some harsh scriptures. <laughs> those are pretty harsh scriptures. But what we have to understand, you know, we have to learn how to forgive and how to move on in life because Hurtful things come, and we may do things to offend others. But he said, you causing yourself to be in danger. So, yeah, we may say, oh, that person's an idiot. Oh, you know, we use those words real loose now. Oh, you're an idiot. But not really meaning they're an idiot because you're just angry and just throwing those words around. But what this is talking about, when you're maliciously calling people names and of uh, tearing people down, he said, "You're in, you're, you're getting into judgment." Now, I know the scripture says to be angry and sin not, and and yes, and but it's telling you here the dangers of anger. When you hold on to anger, then you are subject to get yourself in trouble with God. And so we need to. These are the scriptures. We need to make sure that we let it go. We need to let it go. Stop holding on to it. My sister wrote a song. Let it go. Let it go today. Let it go. So we got to let it go. We can't hold on. Can't hold on to the hurt. Because if you don't let it go, guess what's happening? You're holding on to your freedom. You're not being free. You're being bound. And not only are you just being bound, but you're being bound by that specific thing, by that person. Whomever it is, you're holding that unforgiveness against. They have control of your life. Now, I understand. I understand some, some wounds can be very deep, very hurtful, and it's hard to just move on. And I used to have a saying, I used to say it so much, and I didn't just say it to other people, I said it to myself too, so, I mean, I was just as hard on myself. But anytime you had issues, problems, I would say, get over it. And when I would say that, um, yeah, I was being sarcastic and pretty harsh, because that's just the type of person I was. I was just, get over it. Oh my goodness. It is not that big a deal. You just make it too big a deal out of it. Not realizing what the person is actually feeling. Not realizing what the person is actually going through. I just minimized it because I didn't want to deal with it. Or I didn't want to hear it. So I would just say, get over it. So that was the wrong attitude to have. Because again, some wounds are very deep. It's harder to let go of. It's harder to release. And I do understand that. And God understands it. That's why he has mercy. Because he knows that we, we're going to have some struggles with some things. Now everything or everything somebody do to you, you shouldn't have a struggle with forgiving. But some things I know are more harsh than others. And it takes a little bit more time. You know, because of the pain that's involved and depending on the different circumstances. But don't focus on the pain. When we focus on the pain, that makes it get more control of us. And it makes it take longer to get rid of. So we want to be able to forgive and release that person of whatever they've done. And by you releasing them, that is not you saying, it's okay to hurt me. Come on back and hurt me again. That's not what you're saying. Because you forgiving that person is helping you more than it's helping them. 
Now, if they continue to, to come against you and continue to hurt you, that's something they're going to deal with with God. God is going to deal with them personally. So don't you worry about them. Don't worry about trying to pay them back. He said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. So let God deal with them. But there are three reasons I'm going to give you today to forgive. And the first one is for your own good. Or for your own good, you need to forgive. It's for you. Mark 11 and 25 says, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if you have all against any, that your heavenly Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So, when we refuse to let go of the hurt, we stay connected to the pain. We need to be sure to release the person. But when we go before God and begin to pray and, and worship and begin to shout it, and all oh, glory to God, giving, you, giving him your gift, praising him and doing all these things that we do, and then he brings to your remembrance, hold up, wait, 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 wait. I just remember somebody got an alt against me or I have an alt against someone else. I have an issue with this person. He said, leave your gift right there. Just, just stop what you're doing. Go and get it right. Then come back and offer me your gift. Then you can offer your gift with a clean heart, with a clean spirit. And then I can receive that gift. And so that's what God has wanted from us. Because there is a price now. There is a price to pay for unforgiveness. Guess what that price is? Your peace. When you hold on to unforgiveness, you will not have peace. You can't lay down and be relaxed and not even think about it and never cross your mind. You don't have peace when you have unforgiveness in your heart. And it's so easy for us to point the finger. You know, but as it's already said in the verses in uh, Ephesians, it says get rid of all bitterness. Because bitterness, it is like an infection. Bitterness, it grows and it damages other relationships. The same way an infection, when it's inside your body, it grows and then it starts damaging your organs. And so it works the same way. So we need to make sure that we're getting rid of this unforgiveness so that it does not turn to bitterness and then let that bitterness affect all the other relationships that you do care about. Because see, that relationship you may not care about. You're like, oh well, I don't care about them. I don't like them anyway. Oh well, I'm not going to forgive them because they did me too wrong and they did it too many times. So when you ask how many times should I forgive them, 70 times 7 a day. That's a lot of forgiveness. But we're, we're, we're going to go back to that. <laughs> but if you want to be free in your spirit, in your mind, then you will forgive. If you don't want that cancer to eat away at other relationships, you will forgive. And the second reason why it's so important to forgive is it pleases God. You want to please God? To please God. So we know we want our Heavenly Father to be happy about what we do. We want, I know I used to say it all the time when I was younger, Lord, who I want God to be proud of me. Lord, be proud of me. So I would try my best to do things to make God proud. And I mean, because it's just that, oh, look, my child is doing good things. They're making wise choices. That makes them happy. Same thing with our Father, with God. That's our Father. He wants us to do the right thing. He wants us to make the right choices. And so with doing that, then we're pleasing Him. We want to please God. Stop blaming everybody else for your faults. Things that we're doing, we want to point the finger. If it wasn't for them, then I wouldn't do this. So because they did that, I reacted and did this. I always say it's not so much as what people do to you, it's how you respond to it. What's your response? 
Is it going to be yay or nay? Is it going to be good or bad? Whatever they do to you, think about what would Jesus do. But we want to obey God's command. We want to be free from the pain. But we have to forgive. Forgive other people because our Father forgave us. Matthew 26 and 14, it says, For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So, that's as plain as it gets. There is no other explanation needed for that scripture because he just, he spelled it out right there. So, we, it's not up to us whether we want to forgive or not want to forgive. You know, it's something we are commanded to do. Well, if you want to be forgiven. Well, maybe you don't want to forgive because you don't mind not being forgiven. You don't care about being forgiven by God. You want to just move on with your life and do whatever you want to do. But we have to forgive if we want God to forgive us. So it is time to do some soul searching. Do self-evaluation. Do reflections. That is so important as children of God that we reflect. We have reflections every day to see, Lord, what is it in me that needs to change? Lord, what is it that I'm holding on to that is holding up my blessings? What is it that I'm doing that's causing bad things to happen to me? Lord, speak to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Speak to my heart, God. We want God to speak to us and tell us what we're doing. And just like on last week, I said, let him reveal you to you. You want God to reveal himself or reveal whatever it is that's in your heart. As the scripture says, search me, Lord. If there be anything that's evil, anything that's in my heart that's not like you, Lord, take it out. We have to come before him. People of God, time is winding up. Time is getting too short. He said, except he shorten the day, the very elect will not make it in. So we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. We have no idea. So we need to purify ourselves. We need to cleanse our hearts. We need to forgive one another. And I want to also, because I know I'm, I've been teaching about this forgiveness. I've been reading a lot of literature on forgiveness. And, you know, it's so easy. Oh, my God, it's so easy for us to say, oh, this person needs to get it. They really need to get it because they need to forgive. Oh, Oh, yeah, you're talking about forgiveness and you don't have to search your heart. I can't search your heart. Only you can search your heart. I know what's in here and I'm asking God to show me what where I'm wrong to where I can get it right. And you do the same thing because it's not neither, none of our jobs to judge one another. It's not my job, job to judge you and tell you what you're doing wrong. And it's not your job to judge me. We are to judge ourselves. Say, Lord, help me to do right, to be right. Because we know we're wrong. We know we're wrong. We just don't want to admit it. But we need to admit it. And the third reason why it is important to forgive, because the main one, because God forgave you. That's one of the main reasons. Because he forgave you in Ephesians 4.32. What it said, be kind, one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Hey, simple as that. He's forgiven us for so many things. I know you sat down and wrote a list. You probably wouldn't be able to finish the list. If you could remember, because we probably can't even remember all the stuff that he's uh, forgiven us for. Because when you think about how much He's forgiven us from the time you knew better, you knew right from wrong, and then you, oh, God, I'm sorry, and he forgave you. And, oh, I'm God, because when he forgives, he throw it in a sea of forgetfulness. But the, that's the difference with his forgiveness and our forgiveness, because when we forgive, we still remember, and sometimes throw it back up in people's face. Yeah, I forgave you, but uh, 
I still remember what you did back in 1900 and, you know, <laughs> 70. Like, what? So some people will never, ever let you forget what you did to them, to hurt them. But guess what? That's their problem, not yours. But when you are holding on to it and remembering what people did to you and how they hurt you and what they've done and how they tore you down, how they did this and did that, while you reminiscing on all those things, if you're not reminiscing to get rid of it, then you don't need to be reminiscing on it at all. Because all it does is bring that hurt back up. And that's what we need to do is release it. Release it and let it go. And move forward. You have to throw it away. I know we can't forget it. We're not God. I, I understand that. None of us are God uh, 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 spiritual beings. And we can't throw it in a sea of forgetfulness and forgive and then never remember it no more. That's not how we operate. You're going to remember, and I think it's good that we remember, in the sense of not to fall in that trap again, but not remember to where you can bring it back up to that person and throw it in their face whenever you feel, you know, it's fit to do it. Let me throw this up and remind them how much I forgave them. Would you like God to do that to you? I know I don't. I don't want him reminding me of all the junk I did, all the stupid mistakes that I made. I don't want him to remind me of that. I don't even want to remember that I did that dumb thing. So no, you don't want him to remind you. So why do we do it to each other? And we have to remember the scripture where it says we don't fight against flesh and blood. But we're fighting against principalities. All these other evil spirits that are in the world that sometimes get a hold to people and cause them to act out. Cause them to act like the devil. But it's just, it's not flesh and blood. It's principalities. So remember that. Remember that. That's the enemy that's causing these people to act a certain way. But love should cover, because scripture say it cover a multitude of sin. And it should cover faults as well. If you have real love. But love has waxed cold. And I, I thought, I really thought, and maybe I'm just in a, in a fantasy land, I don't know, but I really thought because of this pandemic and all this harshness, all this death that's all around us, everywhere we turn, somebody is dying that we know. And I thought, with all of this going on, that the saints of God would pull together and be as one. I thought Glory to God. That we will love each other unconditionally. Not because of what you can do for me and what I can do for you. Okay, I love you for that. But otherwise, uh-uh. I thought all these things would change. But whenever things are happening, Satan is working super hard. So now he knows that the time is shortening. And so he's working hard to get into the minds of the people, especially those that are not praying, especially those that are not seeking the face of God during this time. So he's causing these people to walk in the flesh and you're listening to the wrong thing. And now you're making all these mistakes and judging one another, coming against one another. Not realizing that you're allowing the devil to use you. Saints, I'm not talking about just sinners. I'm talking about saints of God. The ones who claim salvation. That claim the Holy Ghost. Speaking in unknown tongues. Prophesying. Laying on the hands. Healing the sick. But the word of God tells us. Those same saints. Are going to be at the end. In Revelation. And when they come up to him and he tells them, depart from me, you work with the name. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold it. What you mean? I, me, I was preaching the word. I was saying all these people got saved because of me. I laid hands. They were delivered. I laid hands. They were set free. Me. You, wait, hold up. You ain't even talking to him over there. No. A 
okay, remember me? And he said, uh, yeah, I remember you. I remember. Yeah, oh, you sure all right. You did lay hands and got people saved and delivered. Yeah, you sure did. People got, ooh, yeah, you had thousands that came to me because of you. He said, but one, 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 one little thing. You did all of that in iniquity. You did it while you were still wicked. While you were going behind those same people's back, lying, telling things, uh, defaming people, saying all kind of evil communication, all these things, you did it. You did all those great deeds for me. Thank you, because that did get thousands in. Thank you. But guess what? You were in iniquity. So depart from me. There would be no pleading at that time. That's it. All done and said. So people of God, we have to learn how to forgive and not just forgive, but we need to let it go. Stop bringing it back up. Stop dragging it down and beating the horse, beating the dead horse over and over and over. Let it go. God will handle the rest. My Lord. And it's so easy. So easy to throw it off on somebody else and say, oh, they did. Oh, they are sinners. Oh, they ain't even right. But Romans 3 and 10 says, as it is written, there is no one righteous. Not even one. None of us is righteous to say, I'm better than you. You're a lower than me. I'm higher than you. You're down here and I'm up here. No, no. That's, that's, not, that's not how this works. We are all sinners saved by grace. All of us. So nobody can point the finger. And I want to end with this quote from Phillips Brooks. He says, forgive, forget, bear with the faults of others as you would have them bear your faults with yours. Be patient and understanding. Life is too short to be vengeful and malicious. I love that quote. I'm probably gonna be quoting it uh, for the rest of the series because we have to learn how to let it go because life is too short to be vengeful and malicious. So we thank God for each of you that has tuned in on today, that has heard this word. I hope, I really hope that I have said something that will help you on today, that will tug at your heart and make you want to do right and want to forgive, at least start on the journey of forgiveness. I mean, if it may be something really hard and tough to, to let go of, at least start it. Because then Jesus will have mercy. He can have mercy on you, but you have to try. You got to do your part. You can't just say, oh, well, that's unforgivable and I'm not going to try. Okay, then he don't, he not forgiving you either. So you can cry all day long at night, and he's still not going to forgive you because he said clearly in his word, if you forgive, then he'll forgive you. It's even in the prayer when he taught uh, his disciples how to pray. He said, forgive us our debt as we forgive our debt towards. So whoever owe you, whoever done something to you, that's your debt toward. So forgive them, then he will forgive you. 